This is Seawolves Storm or not. Good morning, Seawolves. Welcome to the fifth week of the semester. I'm Catherine Procacci. And I'm Costa Secularitas. Many people have off and the stock market is closed today for President's Day, but we're back at it. That's right. And speaking of presidents, President Biden paid a surprise visit to Kiev this morning to show American support as Ukraine enters their second year of war against Russia. One year later, Kiev stands, and Ukraine stands, democracy stands. Biden announced his continued support of Ukraine, including a half a billion dollar package for funding the military. As a reminder, this broadcast is a joint production of the students at the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences and their beloved brothers and sisters at the School of Communication and Journalism. To tell us about President's Day weather, we've got Isha Butt reporting. Isha? Good morning, Seawolves. It is a bit chilly out with a high of 55 degrees and a low of 35 degrees with winds reaching 10 miles per hour from the west. There's going to be a brief chance of snow and rain overnight and it's going to be cloudy throughout the whole day. So please, please, please wear a jacket and don't be like me. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Isha. It certainly is a warm day. I only needed a sweater this morning. Now, Kat, we both get a lot of emails from Stony Brook in our inbox, but did you get the one last week about parking? I sure did, Costa, and even though I'm graduating, it's still frustrating knowing that students will now have additional fees to pay. What are your thoughts? That's right, Kat. I agree it would be upsetting for many commuter students. Also, what maintenance is so expensive that they need to charge students and faculty? It's a parking lot. We've got nearly 25,000 registered students, and parking is one of those issues that touches everyone, even faculty. With more on the matter, here's our reporter, John Neary. They're cheating us out of the value of our money. At a certain point, enough is enough. We are not made of money. We are state college students. An unusually warm February day made being outside near the fountain a good change, but many were unhappy about the new parking regime, especially the everyone pays part. I think they should try to minimize the cost of parking in the first place, and then they should look into, you know, where all that money is going. Why are, you know, is it really just because the state is cutting funding, or are they putting funding in the wrong places? What do we want? Free parking. Now. When do we want it? Now. I'm stood here inside the admin building where the protest has moved. There's at least 50 angry students here and a few staff members, a few police around the premises. Everybody's just standing centrally, voicing their own concerns and how the new protocol will adversely affect their finances and their physical, mental health and everything. After moving straight into the admin building, students aired out their concerns for a little while longer than went about their days. During all this, the USG informed the public that the weekly Senate meeting on February 16th would feature Kendra Violet, Executive Director of MAPS, to speak and answer questions. Students asked a variety of questions ranging from their personal concerns over the proposal to serious economic investigation into the matter. I just want to know the justification behind all of this because it is inequitable and it goes directly against any school's vision of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I just want to know. Thank you. So the model that we have put forth is about choosing where to park um, and giving people options at different levels. It's hard to tell if the administration will take student worries about paid parking into consideration. If they're going to nickel and dime us where it's all like gathering up, gathering up debt, what are we supposed to do? But if they don't, we could be looking at demonstrations as a part of campus life this spring. I'm John Neary, see Wolfstorm or not. Thanks, John. I wonder if the protests are actually going to do anything. With the weather getting warmer, it'll be easier to protest without those heavy coats. However, even though it's about one month until spring, it feels like we've barely experienced winter and we've rarely needed those heavy coats. This is on track to be one of the warmest winters yet. 
The other John, John Tafe, has this week's forecast. John? Thanks, Costa and Kat. Behind me, we have a live view of Port Jefferson, courtesy of EarthCam. What a roller coaster week of weather we are about to have. As Isha said, today will be a high of 55 with a low of 35. Precipitation will start later on tonight. Tuesday, rain and possibly snow in the morning with a high of 44 degrees and a low of 34. Wednesday will start out sunny with a high of 43 degrees. However, weather will deteriorate throughout the day with rain picking up overnight and a low around 34 with winter precip mixing in possibly. Thursday, rain will continue with a high of 42 and a low of 32. Friday, we will have a high of 40 with windy conditions as an Arctic cold front rolls through bringing bone chilling lows of 15 degrees. Saturday, Excitement builds as we have our chance for our first winter storm at night with a low of 27 and a high right around freezing. Sunday, weather starts to clear up with rising temperatures near 50 and a low around 28, ending up our crazy weather week and hopefully marking our first measurable snowfall of the season. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, John. Man, I sure hope that snow forecast comes true. And it sounds like winter might be making a comeback. Unlike our men's basketball team, Missy Jones has more. That's right. Thanks, Costa. The Stony Brook men's basketball team celebrated senior night and their last home game of the season on Saturday. But unfortunately, like most games of their injury plagued year, they lost 68-65 to Hofstra in the Battle of Long Island. Senior guard and captain Tyler Stevenson Moore, who I have pictured behind me right here, scored a career high 27 before a, a capacity crowd at Island Federal Arena. The men will not be involved in March Madness, unfortunately, and have dropped five out of the seven games. However, the women's basketball team pulled out two amazing wins this weekend against the UNC Wilmington Seahawks, 64-46, and the College of Charleston, 82-75. The women's basketball team now has an outstanding record of 16-9, and, and they will be versing the Hampton Pirates on Friday at home. A couple more wins, experts say, will punch their ticket to the NCAA championships. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Missy. I'll be rooting for them, and hopefully they'll make the tournament. They're the one sport that I would go see, along with the footage of at an eagle's nest at, on this President's Day. They really are a rare sight to see and a wonder of nature. That's all we have for you today. We'll see you next week for yes. Seawolf Storm or Not. This is Seawolves. Storm or not? <laughs>